Hello, welcome to Glazing with Amico. I'm Kara, and today uh, I am going to talk about how I glazed this little dish, and I'm going to demo doing a larger dish with a more involved stencil. So this is all done with Celadon uh, glazes, Amico Celadon glazes. And since the Amico Celadons all share a single base recipe, single base formula, uh, this is a completely food safe surface, even though it has lots of different colors and things going on. So if you're concerned about uh, having a, a fully tested food safe surface, we can confirm that they're all the same glaze and it is a food safe base. So I got this idea uh, when I was watching a cooking show and I've seen a lot of people use dried glaze bits on their pottery uh, and it's fun. But I saw a glaze, I'm sorry, I saw a cake baking video where they put a stencil, they frosted the cake, they put a stencil on top of it, and then put another layer of frosting, and then, and then covered the whole thing with sprinkles, colorful sprinkles, and then pulled the stencil off to show the just plain frosted surface. So I thought, I could do that. So this is a great way if you have, you know, we get glaze, we, we go through a lot of glaze in the marketing studio here at Amico, and sometimes it gets dried out, and we have little crunchies in our jars. So I actually let this one dry out. It, it just had a tiny bit of glaze left in the bottom, and it was mostly just stuck to the sides. And, and those sprinkles... You know, you can break them up. I'm going to switch to, uh, I'm going to switch to my overhead so you can see what I'm doing. So I have the these crunchies and I break them up, these little sprinkles. And I broke them up, and then once they were broken up, I'm going to put that back in there for now. Once they were broken up, I sorted them. And I have two jars. One is the large sprinkles, and these are really, really pretty chunky. And then I also got the medium-sized sprinkles. So these are not too small, not too big. They're just kind of, you know, about the size of the sprinkles you would put on a cake. And they're all different colors, but they're only celadons. So I can make sure that they're all easy to keep track of. So David's here with me today. Hello. Hi, David. Hi. Do we have any comments or questions yet? Anybody joining us? Not so far. I don't see much activity at all. No problem. So, um, so I start with this plate, and this plate. Now this is important, I will say this twice. This plate has two coats of Amico Celadon Snow that are already dry. So I will re re repeat this. I already glazed this with two coats of C10 Snow brushed on around the edge and on the face. Uh, and that way I can do the finishing work on this. So what I did is I, I brushed on the glaze, two coats, yesterday. So it is completely dry and ready to apply the third coat. Now this is important. So you could do this with obsidian. You could do it with storm. You could do it with any of the celadon glazes for your background. And... It's really a simple, simple process. So, let me get my, I have my water, I have my brush. So I'm going to glaze where 
No, I'm not. What am I doing? I'm jumping ahead. Let me back up. I have to have a stencil. So, if you have a Cricut, or you have a, a printer, or if you just draw really well, what I did is I got a printout of a unicorn silhouette. In this case, I used a moon, a crescent moon. And uh, you can either use your Cricut to cut it out, or if you uh, don't have a Cricut, you can just trace it onto the kind of vinyl that you use for a Cricut. And this is um, vinyl, sticky back vinyl. Uh, it doesn't work so well for paper. I find that this works really well for vinyl because the glaze doesn't want to stick to it. So it's easier to figure out where you are. So I printed this out, traced it onto the Cricut vinyl, and cut it out. Let's see, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Thank you for joining us today. Do we have another? And just a hello from Marie. Hi, Hi. Marie. Marco. So. Yeah, no question there is for us. So I, I'm, I'm just trying to get the backing off of this. Sometimes a little tricky. So I get my backing off. And try not to stick this to itself. There we go. And arrange it on the plate where I want it to go. There we are. And make sure to push it down, smooth it out. A little suggestion is uh, maybe move your camera down a little bit. I can move to the zoom. Uh, I, let's see if the zoom might be a little too close. Hang on a moment. I don't have the kind of camera that will zoom in and out for me while I'm in the middle of filming, so I have to arrange my, my viewfinder a little bit. Here. Here we go. So you can see a little bit better. So I've pressed the unicorn down nice and firm. And now I'm going to apply my third coat of snow. And I'm going to make it pretty quick. And I'm also going to put it all the way up to the edge, but I don't want to go beyond where I want my sprinkles to go. Okay, nice, thick, quick coat. You can see how the glaze is not sticking to the, the, the uh, stencil. And now I'm going to use my dry sprinkles, my medium size dry sprinkles. I want to do this while the glaze is still wet. If I if I wait too long and the glaze is dry, it won't stick. See how they're sticking? Really nicely sticking. A few of them are coming off. That's fine. And I can put those back in. They might have a little bit of white glaze on them hurt any since again it's all the celadons. I'm gonna try to I might try to stick a little bit more right here so that we see some of the main. So I used a little water to kind of re 
dampen the glaze there. There we go. So while that is drying, I'm going to come back to show you all how the uh, berry bowl that I glazed a few weeks ago came out. This was fog with, um, you know, it's been so long. Did I use lustrous jade? I believe I used lustrous jade on this. So it's two, two coats, three coats of fog inside and out on the berry bowl and then lustrous jade around the, the outside. And you can see that the way that I cleared out the holes that they all stayed open. A couple of them are have more glaze in them than I would like, but the holes stayed open, so this is a, a nice functional berry bowl, and I do love being able to use that. So uh, once the glaze has dried, let me see if I can Uh, once the glaze has dried, let me show you a different view of the berry bowl. Lovely fog and lustrous jade. I think I had the wrong angle before. So, so while that is drying, I'm going to find my, do I have my needle tool? I might not have my needle tool. Oh. Better yet. So I can do this now. Let's see. Shake loose any pieces. Find an edge of your stencil and carefully so that you don't dig up any of the glaze underneath. So I found the edge of the stencil and carefully, carefully oh, I'm tearing my stencil. Yeah. Some of them are not wanting to stick as well. So some of them moved. So I'm going to use some of my smaller ones and place them where I want the chips to be because this leg doesn't look like it's going to stay where it wants to go. But when I fire this, it will, like this came out, um, I'll have the outline of a white, I'll have a white unicorn with colored sprinkles all around it. And I will show you that next week when I come back. Sorry. Sorry, Sandy, we can't see you doing it. Did that, did that go better? Um, I'm going back and forth between multiple windows, so I'm having difficulty seeing exactly what I'm doing. There we go. So next week, I'll bring this back. Next week, sorry. I think they're requesting a Yep, sorry about that. Here's the overhead. Did I did I not show the overhead when I was pulling off the uh, the I thought that I had the overhead for the unicorn. So I pulled the unicorn off and I will fire this this week and uh, bring it back to show you all next week when I talk about how to fire spoons, jewelry, ornaments, and other things that you might want to have a back uh, glazed on or that you want to have uh, some kind of decoration on the back, things that might be seen on both sides. Uh, I know that I get a lot of questions for people who are firing spoons on how you can fire them or ornaments on how you can fire them uh, so that they are glazed all over. Sorry about the difficulty with the overhead. Let me see if I can. There we go. So next week will be spoons. I'll bring this back to show you how it came out. And uh, thank you for joining me all today. I know this was a very 
simple kind of, of uh, uh, glaze lesson, but I hope that uh, uh, I hope to see you all next week. Thank you for joining me for another glaze adventure and have a happy November.